Hello there. If you clicked on this video, it means that you are searching for the best TV box for your money. It also means that you are looking for the most informative review with no hidden secrets. And it also means that you're looking to save money and at the same time have the freedom to stream movies and TV shows and play Android games without restrictions. Well you have come to the right place. My name is Nick and you decided to stay. And to get started, I will do a quick unboxing. So this is the box it comes in. All the information it has is that it's a 64-bit quad-core CPU. It comes equipped with HEVC video codec support. The GPU is the Mali T720 MP2, and it can play 6K UHD videos. So without further ado, here's the unboxing. The T95 Max runs on the Allwinner H6 Cortex-A53 quad-core CPU. The GPU is the Mali T720 MP2. It comes with 4GB of DDR3 RAM and 32GB of internal storage. It comes with single-band 2.4GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is not supported. So this is what's in your purchase. You have the T95 Max TV box itself. You get an infrared remote. You know what I always say about these remotes, if you are comfortable with them and it's serving its purpose then fine. If not, you can always buy a Bluetooth Air Mouse if you need more advanced navigation, especially if you install lots of Kodi add-ons. You can find an Air Mouse link in the description area below this video. You get one HDMI cable, a 5V 2 amps power adapter, and a user's manual. So before I proceed, let's take a closer look at its input-output peripherals. The housing is made of plastic, with the logo printed to the top. As I turn to the back, here we have one HDMI port, one Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, one audio video port, and your power input. To the side, you have a USB 3.0 and a USB 2.0 port. You also have a micro SD card reader. To the other side you have some ventilation holes. To the front, you have an LED power light. And to the bottom, you have some more ventilation holes. So I will now connect it to the TV and continue with the review. So I've connected the box. And what you'll see when you start up every time is this splash paint boot up animation for a couple of seconds. And it boots up very quickly. Then you're taken to the Sunbull launcher. So here we are at the launcher, and it is their same launcher, but this time it's running on the new Android 9 Pi operating system. This is the layout of the new Android 9 vertical settings panel. The launcher comes with the usual large main buttons that cannot be changed, and a shortcuts bar here at the bottom. It appears that the developers of the Sunbull firmware has not solved the issue of the navigation and notifications bar for multitasking, as it is noticeably missing from all their recent models and now on their new Android 9 firmware. The launcher also comes with a one-click memory cleanup button for freeing up system resources. Moving on to the apps section. I see they have included some browsing apps like Chrome browser, Firefox browser, the Google Play Store, and Aptoid TV. For streaming, they have included IMBD, KD Player, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, and YouTube. And for casting mobile devices, they have included Airpin Pro and Miracast. They have also included a wireless OTA updates app for future firmware updates. So I will now install some additional apps needed to complete my review. So I have installed all the apps I need, and first I have the alternative launcher test. In this test I discovered that out of the three alternative launchers I normally use, the only one that works fine on this box is the ADW2 launcher. The Nova launcher installs, but it's missing some key functions, and the EV launcher doesn't work at all. So I will now do a quick demonstration of the ADW2 launcher.
So the ADW2 launcher works fine on this box with sliding multiple screens and mouse click drag and drop features. Next, I will test to see if screen rotation to display in portrait mode works on this box. It appears that screen rotation doesn't work on this box and I can't even find the auto rotation option in this new Android Pie operating system. The next test is to see if the box is rooted. The results show that the box is rooted, running on Android 9 Pie operating system. This feature grants you the freedom to install any app from the Google Play Store or sideloaded apps via APK downloads without restrictions. The only setback with root access is that it limits the DRM permissions for Netflix to show in HD and 4K quality. I would also like to remind you not to install the super user app and try to update the box because it will crash your box and put it into a permanent boot loop that requires a firmware update to restore it. I now show the digital rights management information or DRM information as most of us have come to know it. The results show that the box has support for Google Widevine Level 3 and no HDCP protection. This means officially Netflix will only show in standard quality, regardless of what package you are paying for. However, I was recently introduced to an alternative way to watch Netflix in HD quality, so I will be testing this method to see if it works in a moment. I will now dive a little deeper into its system and hardware information. Under system information, it shows that the manufacturer is Allwinner, and the model is the M-Box. The board in use is listed here as the Petrol P1, so all who are in possession of a custom Android ROM for this board, this dongle is compatible with your software. It comes with 4GB of RAM and 32GB of internal storage. This here is the remainder of the storage after the Android installation and apps installed. The Bluetooth version is 4 Plus, apparently this board has Bluetooth features but it is not available or accessible in the firmware. Under CPU information, it shows that the CPU is a 64-bit quad-core Cortex-A53 CPU running up to 1.4 GHz in 32-bit mode. The board is configured with support for only 32-bit ABIs, allowing it to access up to 4 GB of RAM and compatible with most 32-bit applications and processes. Under display, it shows that the GPU is the dual-core Mali 720 GPU, with a refresh rate of 60Hz and OpenGLES 3.1 support, which adds some gaming power to this box. Under network, it shows that the box has 2.4GHz Wi-Fi and 5G is not supported. Under Android information, it shows that the operating system is Android 9 Pi, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under thermal information, it shows that the operating temperature holds between 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, and this can rise up to 70 degrees under heavy activity. The box comes with all the necessary codecs needed for the playback of 4K media like HEVC, H.264 and VP9 decoding. And that's it for system and hardware information, and now let's take a look at some benchmarks. First I have the results from the A1 SD Bench app that measures RAM and internal storage read and write speeds. The results show that the Sunvolt T95 Max has a RAM copy speed of 2769 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 85 megabytes per second and a write speed of 54. These results are low compared to the new line of MLogic S905X2 boxes. Now I show the results of the Wi-Fi speed test. From these results it shows that the box could not make the maximum speed of my internet package of 60 megabytes. On the 2.4 GHz single band Wi-Fi, and on the Ethernet LAN port, the box was only able to clock between 30 to 38 megabytes at most. This is okay for users with single band Wi-Fi routers. However, if you have a dual band router and internet speeds in excess of 50 megabytes then this box will not be able to access the top speed. I now show the results of the Antutu benchmark. The Antutu benchmark gives a score derived from tests taken on the CPU speed, RAM and GPU performance. After all tests were completed, the T95 Max got an Antutu score of 45,654. This score is not bad, but it is a bit lower than the new M-Logic boxes. Next, I show the results of the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark. This test focuses solely on CPU performance by performing a series of timed tasks, where the faster the CPU completes each tasks the higher the score. 
The T95 Max got a score of 640 single core and 1761 multi core. This score is slightly lower than the new M Logic boxes, and this is due to the CPU clock speed being at 1.4 GHz. The final results is from the Treaty Mark Gamers Bench application that focuses solely on GPU graphics performance and has tailored a series of tests to suit your device's GPU. This box comes with OpenGL ES 3.1 support which qualifies it to run the Ice Storm Extreme test and the Slingshot test. After both tests were completed, the box got a score of 4125 in the Ice Storm Extreme test and 133 in the Slingshot test. And once more we see the score here being a bit lower than the new 2019 MLogic boxes. So that's the end of the benchmarks, and I will now focus on the entertainment features of the box. I will start with Netflix. Netflix comes pre-installed on the box and it works by simply logging in with your username and password. I will now check with my HD account to see what's the highest quality we can get. From a movie description, there isn't any HD symbol indicating that you can play this movie in HD quality. This means that Netflix plays up to standard quality on this box, and this is because it does not have the required Google Widevine level support that we saw just a while ago. However, in a few seconds I will try running Netflix off of Kodi to see if we can get the HD quality we need. So moving on to YouTube. YouTube comes pre-installed on this box, and it is the Android TV version. So I will now play a YouTube video to see what's the highest quality we can get. The Android TV version plays up to 4K quality on this box. So I am going to the Kodi segment I mentioned earlier. Kodi comes pre-installed in the form of the KD player which is actually Kodi 18 Leia. You have the option to uninstall this version and install the version from the Google Play Store or a latest nightly build from the Kodi website. So I will do that now. So I have installed the latest Kodi 18.1 Leia from the latest nightly build, and I have installed all the add-ons created from my last backup file. I also install Netflix add-on from another YouTube tutorial. So I have good news and bad news. The good news is, I got the Netflix add-on to install, and if I hover over a movie, you can see at the bottom of the screen the various movie resolutions, like 720p and HD 1080p which is good. However, the bad news is, I cannot get any of the movies to play. I believe it has to do with the DRM support of the box which I haven't worked out yet how to install in Kodi, but I am working on it. If you're not into Kodi, and you don't want all the pains of setting up third-party add-ons and you just want to watch unlimited streams of free movies and TV shows, then there's an easier option. You can download and install all the latest movie streaming APKs for thousands of free HD movies and TV series from season to season. I was able to install all the popular APKs and they stream up to 1080p quality, they load very quickly because they are standalone apps, and they are easy to install. A list of these APKs can be found in the description area. I will now play some 4K video samples.
Well at least some of the samples played okay. However, some of the videos also played with some jerky playback issues. For those of you who are interested in casting your mobile device to this box, it comes pre-installed with Miracast for Android devices and AirPin Pro for iOS devices. So I will now cast my Android cell phone using Miracast. So Miracast works fine on this box and there's very little lag in the response. I will now play some Android games to test its 3D graphics performance and for gamepad key mapping capability. Welcome everybody, Alan Smith alongside me, Martin Tyler, nice to have you along for the ride. Could be a goal. Oh, wonderful finish. Lucas Ratt. He read that passage of play, was able to make the interception. He's got to score! Oh, it could be off, off the post! It's going to be a substitution now for this team. And it's a heading chance now, still in play here. The games ran okay, with smooth handling on the Mali T720 GPU. However, I couldn't get gamepad keymapping apps to work, because they have not updated them to work on the new Android Pi. In summary, the Sunvolt T95 Max running on Android 9.0, like most other TV boxes that try to launch early when a new Android is released, found itself with a few kinks to iron out. Or was it the Sunvolt developers who designed this box who is to question? I will tell you what I mean in a second, but first I will start with the positives. The box runs on Android 9 Pi operating system. The box is rooted. I got one alternative launcher to work. Netflix plays in standard quality. YouTube plays in 4K quality. Kodi works fine and streams movies in HD quality. Movie APKs also work fine and streams in HD. Some 4K videos from my list played OK. I was able to cast my phone to the box via Miracast, and 3D gaming was good. On the downside, 
For those of you who may not know, the Allwinner H6 and Mali T720 when configured correctly, can match or even outperform the new MLogic S905X2 hardware. What I noticed in this box, is that they couldn't clock the CPU higher than 1.4 GHz because the box would overheat. This shouldn't be if adequate cooling is provided via a large enough heatsink on the mainboard. The low CPU clock speed also affected the benchmark scores and memory read and write speeds. The box only has single 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth is not supported. The launcher has no navigation bar and notifications bar. Screen rotation does not work. The box doesn't have the DRM support for Netflix to play in HD or 4K quality. Some of my 4K sample videos had some playback issues. Treaty Gaming was restricted to games with OpenGL ES 3.1 support and under, and Gamepad key mapping does not work on this box. Well viewers there you have it. 